Uh, this video turned out to be kind of a dud. The, uh, the no power call ended up having power. We didn't have to do anything at all. Wasted an hour and a half, two hours of my time, which is all part of the game. So no big deal. I wasn't gonna bother posting this video at all, but I'll probably throw it online tonight anyways. Um, I did talk about a few good points explaining how our poll numbers work. And also those, those who watch the channel know nothing, nothing I post is staged. Everything is 100% real. And jobs like this are part of being in alignment. Hey guys, welcome back. You're watching Bob's Decline. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to be heading to a call. I have no idea what we're getting into. Actually, I haven't even been there yet but i've got a work order on the truck let me just open this guy up and i believe it's related to a storm that we had a month ago the comments say a tree has fallen on the camp so i'm guessing that's why it hasn't been called in yet probably a camp the, the owner doesn't visit overly frequently uh a tree has fallen on the camp due to the road whatever that means it's located along the driveway and the cause was a result of hurricane fiona there is a gate, it is not locked, and it is showing an outage. So I've got no idea what we're getting into. I suspect the the area that we're heading to, I suspect there's gonna be an absolute mess of trees. When it comes to the low voltage wires, it's up to the property owner, the customer, to main, tr maintain the trees on their property. Of course, once they grow out of control and get up into the wires, then it's a safety hazard to touch them. So there has to be somebody certified to look after them at that point. And if they ever break land on the wires, if, if they're pushing the wire out of its path in, in any way, or if it's a danger tree that's that's already broken, ready to fall right on the lines that will impact our system, then of course we will address it. So this case here sounds like it's might be something we're gonna look after. Um, like I said, I haven't been there yet. I suspect it's gonna be an absolute mess of trees, but it's, it's a solid hours drive out of town um, by myself today as usual. So once we get there, we'll see if it's something that we need an extra hand for, or if it's something we can tackle ourselves. Either way, we're gonna bring you guys along for the ride. So let's go check that out right now. All right guys, so we're in the general vicinity of the call now. Uh, there's no, no address on the call. It literally says no address. What we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out where we're going from here using poll numbers. So something I don't think I've ever mentioned in our videos before, the, the poll numbers on our system, they're, they're really quite simple. In fact, when I first started in the line trade with this company, we didn't have computers and GPS and stuff like that. Our entire system was mapped out in great big books. There was dozens of them on some of the trucks, especially this, this area that's quite busy. And we went more so with poll members than we did addresses to locate protection points, which is even, even customers. So basically what it is, you get at your substation and the first poll outside that substation is gonna be say poll one, the next poll, poll two, so on and so forth. So you go down the road, I don't know, 84 poles. You get to a T in the road where the line takes off to the right, the line takes off to the left. The first poll on the right is gonna be poll 84. Did I say 84 the first time? I can't remember. Anyway, so 84. R1, R for right. And then the first pole on the left is gonna be 84 L1. So that might go another 34 poles. So that pole, that 34th pole down is gonna be 84 R34. Then maybe it takes off on a sideline for three span, 84 R34 L3. And then if you carry down the main road, R35, R36, etc. So once you get quite a ways from the sub, you're 20 miles out of town, you might have a pole number that looks like 84, R34, R16, L2, R602. So it's, it's really quite simple to follow. You simply take rights and lefts. Now, obviously it does get a little bit more complicated than that. Um, and then they are further divided from there into line numbers. So you look at the city, there, there, there might be, a, say the hub right in the city. And then you go clockwise in a circle and they're gonna be 8001, 8002, 8003. And that's gonna, that's gonna, that's going to identify a geographic, geographical area. So you might have 801 line, pole, 
R-74L2. And then the, the poles are also numbered for the communication company. Their system's quite a bit different from ours. Theirs has Fs and OPs and Rs for the most part. F being front, OP being opposite, R being rear. So if the address is 156 and there's a pole across the street, it's going to be OP 156. So between their pole numbers and our pole numbers, you can usually figure out where you're going. All right, so I'm gonna get this camera flipped around here and we'll see without showing the customer's private information. All right, so bottom left-hand side of the screen, we can see the pole numbers, 804, 580L2. 580L2, so we're gonna turn the GPS on and I'm gonna get this camera flipped around and get you can see the map here. So as I've mentioned many times, the blue lines are our three phase lines and the red is our single phase. So I know I'm on 8004 line just because I know the area. Let's see where that 580L2 is, if it's anywhere near me at all. So 467, 468, so we're 122 poles away. Just out of curiosity, I'll zoom back out. Uh, so we're gonna go, what I'm guessing is gonna be about 120 poles. Shut off my GPS here. Uh, we're probably around, no, not that far. Let's say right around here. So. And there's a sideline there. So there could be primary wires down. So we're just going to put a marker on that sideline. We'll zoom back out. And we can see where I'm at now, up here. And we're heading to this location right here. Probably another 15 minute drive or so. All right, so we just rolled in. And we're actually at a location. The video I posted, maybe three videos ago, um, where I had myself and my partner cutting a ton of trees off of, uh, well, I was going to say off the wire, but the wire was on the ground. Um, this isn't too far from there, and we actually had a call here as well. The sideline was open. We cleared all the trees, we closed the sideline back in. So I'm not sure what the deal is here today or what we're going to be walking into. Um, there was a few camps in this driveway, so I'm going to take a look at the meter number. 738741. So I'm probably going to forget that. You guys remember that number for me. 738741. Alright, got it. So we're going to go for a walk. Uh, show you guys what we're looking at here in just a second. I'm going to lock up the truck because all of a sudden, these last year or so, it seems like theft is so prevalent here that if you leave anything unattended at all, it goes missing pretty quick. So there's the main three phase line, our cutouts closed in. Uh, sometimes the fuse will blow and the door won't open, you'll see the little fuse tail hanging down. That's not the case here. It's as far as I can tell. So let's take a walk. Now, as I mentioned, this is the first time that I'm showing up here, so I'm not sure, I have no idea what we're getting into. Those of you that watch this show often know that everything is 100% real. Nothing, nothing is staged at all. There's probably no one home in here. See a camp off to the left right over here. But from what I remember, there was no power going to that camp. Primary stops right here. Everything looks good there. It's all pretty well brand new. So we'll follow our secondary line in here to the right. Now, when we were here a month ago, there was quite a few trees down over this driveway, but we did clear everything. 
could be a call that was in the system that never got cleared for some reason. Sometimes that happens. So we'll see what this meter number is. If it's 730741, I think is what I said. Yes, sir, and that's that's it. Seven three zero seven four one. Power's on. Those little squares at the bottom right hand side show that uh, the, the wheels are turning. Everything's good here. Said the tree fell on the roof or something. But you can see some storm damage here still. Now I know. I don't know where the driveway is, but there was a camp over here as well. Might as well check things out while we're here. Here's our other camp. There's the secondary line. It actually travels right through the woods there. Everything's good here as well. That's probably all the debris from the trees we cleared up while we were here the first time. on there too so no idea why this call landed on my truck today yes kind of wasted solid two hours of my day but not much we can do about that these things do happen sometimes So I guess we'll just head back to the truck. So before we shut her down for the day, I do want to extend my thanks to everyone for always watching. And something, oh, this is a heavy box. So something I've want, been wanting to show you guys more of is some underground stuff. Uh, the cables themselves, the splices, how a lot of that stuff works. And I was talking with a gentleman from ABB that reached out to me, asked if there's anything he could help with on the channel where he had access to quite a bit of equipment. And he sent me this box, brand uh, Elasta mold that's right full of stuff. So. All kinds of products used for underground terminations and splicing. Uh, this was inside, which I thought was pretty cool. This, you guys have probably all seen sleeves before for ACSR. This is a compression sleeve. And this is an automatic sleeve, a quick sleeve we call them. And he sent me this one that was cut open so you can see the inner mechanisms of how the wire simply slides into the sleeve, gets jammed up in that little wedge, and doesn't come back out. These these sleeves are rated to hold the wire up at full line tension at full ampacity as well. So pretty neat stuff. I also did stop by the office. The boys were tearing apart some underground. So I grabbed a few pieces of scrap so we can take a closer look at that. So we've got a, this is probably number one primary cable with termination on it. We're going to do some videos coming up where we're going to cut that stuff apart. And we've also got a great big 750 MCM copper primary cable. So we're going to jump into that stuff a little bit more here in some future videos. 
So for any of you that are watching that want to help support the channel, all you got to do is subscribe. We're, we're nearing the 100k subscriber mark and at 100,000 views we will be able to hopefully get, uh, what's that called, the little blue check mark beside your name, verified, that's the word. So it'd be real cool to get verified and we're going to be doing another giveaway pretty soon. Um, it would be nice to get verified before we do the giveaway and hopefully we're going to be able to make this giveaway a little bit more foolproof so some scam artists don't attempt to rip anyone off but what we're going to be doing back over a year ago we had a video called fractal burning i believe i still get that branch and we're going to have that mounted on a plaque it's going to say bob's decline it's all going to be shellacked and stuff anyways once that's ready i'm going to show you guys that we're going to be giving that away in an upcoming video so as usual Thanks for stopping in, guys. I got a few more calls to head to before we go back into town. So we'll see you all soon. Oh, frig.